Hey guys, my name is Stuart and today we're going to be having a look at how to build this electromagnet crane kit. And we've got the majority of our boom done. Okay. <clears throat> From here, if you want to, you can take your glue stick and you can put little blobs of glue just on each corner but I only suggest that you do this when you're happy with how everything's working and that everything's straight so like this you can see it's not quite straight so I would move that a little bit adjust it and then make sure that things like that are all the way through so get it neatly neatly done and you can use the glue that you've got to secure all of these things in place so this is what your boom should look like now as a whole you've got triangulated sections coming through um, your single solid skewer running all the way along but then one two three separate skewers cut to 11 centimeters on both sides with all six of our triangles slotted in and this forming the point the tip of our crane let's move on to step three the next step that we got we're just going to start with using this last profiled section that we've got and you're going to pull off the off cut bits from the corners or use your knife to separate them the first run of these that I did um, the these sections fell out quite easily so I did adjust that um, so that the ones that you've got should be a bit stronger um, or less likely to fall out but it's not a problem if it does because this is what you want for now these are off cuts but we will use them so don't throw them away yet cool so now we're going to take this this is the, the top part of the base of our crane we're going to take a ruler and we're going to measure or draw a line from the edge of this point over here, that corner, to the edge of that corner over there. And we're going to run our pencil line all the way across. And we're going to do the same on the other side from this corner to this corner. So let's line it up nicely and run our pencil mark all the way along. Now you really want to make sure that these are straight going across because if these are squiff they're not at 90 degrees to the straight part over here our crane is gonna is gonna move funny. Right so I'm going to take the, my ruler I've got a I've got a ruler which has got a fat end and a thin end um, doesn't matter if your ruler's got two pointy ends and I'm going to take the thin end of my ruler and I'm going to use it lining it up along that line and I'm going to use the small end of the thin end of my ruler and I'm going to push down until I've crushed the cardboard okay this is called this is what we call actually um, creasing the cardboard so that we've got a flexible join part over here so you can see It'll start to bend a little bit. These curved sections are here actually to relieve the stress because this is this this is a hinge. This is a flexible point that our crane is going to be moving up and down, up and down, up and down on. And we can do the same thing on the other side. Use the sharper edge, the sharpest edge of your um, ruler, and push down evenly to crush the flutes in that cardboard so that it can move up and down freely like that. Whatever you do, don't use a blade or anything to, to, to cut along that line. It's, it's a fold line, not a cut line. So you can see here, we've got two folded sections. Don't fold it all the way over, you don't need to. All you need is to just crush it so that it can move from flat to about 90 degrees up. It doesn't ever need to go any further than that. So don't push it all the way over because you could just damage it. That's all you need for this step. And so, what happens with this is this is going to attach to the boom of your crane and you're going to slide it through the holes just like we've slid it through all the other um, flutes before. 
and so I'm just going to line it up like that and line it up like that and slide it all the way down and there you can start to see the body of your crane coming together and this part is going to turn into our handle that we're going to use to control the way our crane moves. Oh, I'm bumping my camera stand again. Right, so you're going to slot that on and my crane pops. Because I didn't glue it together, it's starting to fall apart. Right, so we can move on to our next step now. For our next step, we're going to make our electromagnet. And for an electromagnet to work, you need an iron core. And this is not pure iron, but this is good enough. It's a nice um, right sized chipboard screw. And we need a coil of wire. And so this is what they call wrapping wire. The wire is inside and it's got a plastic coating of insulation around the outside. But the insulation is really thin and if you just pinch it with your nails and then you pull it, you can actually see that the plastic comes off really easily and then you've got your shiny wire on the inside. But we're just going to use this for the ends for joining this to our battery pack later. We're not going to damage our insulation for now. But what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap this, unwind it from our thread card. Right, now we've got our whole length of wire unwound. I'm just going to pull it through my fingers like this to bend it nice and straight. Try and avoid having any kinks in this wire and avoid cutting it or damaging the insulation so that it doesn't short out on itself. So you've got about three meters of wire here. Okay, so now we've got this one end and we're going to use this, we're going to wrap a coil of wire around the screw and to give you an idea of what we're going to make, we're going to turn it into something that looks like this. We're going to have about half a meter of wire on the end before we get to our electromagnet. Now this it needs to have a complete circuit so you can see that we've got two wires coming in and then running through the flute of the cardboard. The cardboard is really just to hold this nicely in place and allow us to, to work without getting a tangle. And this one has been really neatly wound. I didn't do this one. I don't have the patience for that. But uh, yeah, we'll try and do something like this and make it as neat and as beautiful. So you're going to take the one off cut that you've got and you can take a pair of scissors or a, pair, a knife or so and cut it so that it's about two centimeters this way and we're just going to cut it off nice and straight and then we're going to take our screw <clears throat> and we're going to screw the thread part into the flute all the way until the thread is completely covered so if you twist it in you can see that the thread is poking through the cardboard a little bit on the side there it's not cutting all the way through and now we've just got the smooth part of the shaft running along here. Then we're going to take our wire and we're going to slide it in as close to the screw as possible through the hole. And we want to leave half a meter of wire loose on this end. So I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to measure 300 and then I'm going to pull out another 200 and that will be 3 plus 2 is 5. Now I'm going to hold that one end and I'm going to start wrapping the rest of this wire in a tight coil around this metal core. And it doesn't matter which way around you're winding it, as long as whichever way you start winding it, you keep winding it in that direction. And we're going to wind it all the way along, nice and tight, but not too tight so that you snap the wire, just firmly. And you want to try and get these, these wrappings as as close as possible so you can see that's looking really nice I'm impressed with myself even. okay when you get to the end you can start going back again and so it's going to fold over and then start winding back towards where you started again going in the same direction in the winding direction but you, you're going back on itself now when you get to the end going to go around once or twice and it's going to start you'll feel like it automatically starts to wind back in the direction that 
came from. My wires are getting twisted on this end. Here. Untangle it back here. The wire is quite long, so you're going to need to be careful with how not to get it all tangled up. We're just going to continue wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. All right, now you're going to wrap this until you've got the same length of wire on the end of your coil left over as you've got with what you've started. So if you pull this out, you can see I've still got a bit more to wind. So I'm gonna do some more windings. Let me check again. So still a little bit more, maybe one or two more windings. One, two, and let's see all the way through. That looks perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the loose, the, the side that I've been winding and slide it through the opposite hole of the flute cardboard and bring it out over there. Okay, make sure it's not kinked. So now you can see we've got a complete wound coil and the two wires coming out. To prevent it from unwinding and getting messy, we're gonna take this and we're just gonna do a couple of twists like that to hold it together and prevent it from becoming tangled. And that is your electromagnet. So when we put electricity, if we run a current through these wires, they're gonna, the electrons are gonna start spinning around here and it's going to induce a magnetic field into this iron core. And this iron core, this nail, or at least the screw is gonna become magnetic. As long as there's electricity running through this, there's a current flowing, this is gonna have a magnet or magnetic field of its own. As soon as the coil stops being powered, then the magnetic field is gonna collapse. And so it's gonna lose its magnetic um, field and it's not gonna be magnetic anymore. So that's the really cool thing about electromagnets. So I've stripped the one wire already. You can go take about two centimeters of your wire and just twist the, the insulation a little bit and then just using your nails you can strip that wire off if you don't have any nails you can very carefully use like the edge of your ruler avoid using things that are sharp because it'll cut through the wire and it's really really thin and delicate wire you can snap it with your fingers all right so that is our electromagnet that we have just made and We'll move on to the next step from here. By now, your glued base should be pretty strong. The glue should have dried a fair bit. If, if it's still showing thick sections of white, um, that means that your glue hasn't dried completely yet. But the majority of this is dried, so I'm going to move on. But ideally, you should leave this for at least half an hour to an hour to dry nice and, and firmly. Um, for the glue to set and, and get strong before you move on to the next step but I'm just going to be careful I'm not going to put too much force in this and um, we can carry on with our instructions so if you have a look here you've got two strips this strip the thinner strip is really just for you to play with um, if you want to modify your crane it's another piece that you can use as a substitute for the center pieces as well you can use this instead of that um, for the middle parts. Because it can flex like this, it makes it a little bit easier to line everything up using this instead of that. So that's just a different option. You'll find that the other strip that you've got, if you take a ruler and you measure it against the ruler, it'll be six centimeters long or 60 millimeters long. We're gonna take this and we're going to wrap it around this crane base nice and, and snugly and this is going to be the sleeve that fits over and allows the top of our crane to to turn to go move from left and right so we're going to take that and we're going to push it over and we're going to need to glue this section on to this section okay so I want to make sure that I don't put more glue than I need to. So that's why I've wrapped it around here. I'm gonna take my pencil 
and I'm going to put a mark about two centimeters in from the edge. So I can see over here, there's my mark. I'm just going to mark all the way across. I'm going to take my glue stick. Before you start putting glue on, grab your two elastic bands. And then on the smooth side of this cardboard, you've got the bumpy side and the smooth side. You're going to take the smooth side and you're going to squeeze a strip of glue along like this. Remember, you still need glue, so you shouldn't have used more than, sort of, you shouldn't have less than, I guess, maybe half a mil of glue left. And now we're going to take this, we're going to wrap it around nice and tightly, and then run this glue. Now the important thing that you want to make sure is that you don't mess glue along the bottom so that this gets glued onto this or that this gets glued onto the center part because we want it to be able to move freely like that. But we also don't have the time or the patience to hold it in place like this. So if you grab an elastic band then and you open it up and you slide it over the top, then the elastic band can do the work for you. And you can roll it all the way down to the bottom, grab your second one, stretch it over, clip it on the top, and now we can leave this to dry for a while. But before we leave this, let's take the opportunity to glue this part onto the base over here. So this section over here is gluing along to the, the top of this. So while we've got our glue here, um, it might work better for you to separate this part, the boom of your crane, from the base of your crane for this step because it just makes it a little bit smaller and easier to work with. We're going to take our glue stick, we're going to carefully run it along the top. Remember that the glue can't stick on the holes. Try and avoid having the glue run down on the inside. I'm just going to take my finger and wipe it off. This glue is water-based, so you can wash it off your hands if you get it on your fingers. It's non-toxic, but I wouldn't recommend eating it and I also wouldn't re recommend getting it onto your clothes or onto your table at home. So you can just wash that off your finger. If you mess it on, on me I'm just going to rub it together until it goes away. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick this over the center of our our base. So if you have a look here, let's try and make this so we can see. We're going to stick that in the middle and over there like that. Now if you have a look, stuck it on a little bit squiff so you can move it. If you move it too many times, the glue is going to lose its, its stickiness. So if, you, if you've moved it again, you might need to reapply some glue. So because I've moved it, I'm just going to unplug that and just run a little bit more glue around some of the points. You want this to be stuck on nice and firmly. If you have a glue gun at home, you can also use a glue gun to glue this project together. But just be very careful if you're using glue guns because you can burn yourself really badly using glue guns. Right, so now we've glued our top section onto our base. You can see that it's still able to move left and right. That's an important part of our, our crane. And this can rotate. This should also be able to slide up. So you can see now, this is just a cylinder that's slotted over the base that we've got and it can move left and right. Like we did before, we can put something reasonably heavy on top here and we're going to leave this for another half an hour or so. So this project requires some patience um, for, for you to get everything together. I've upgraded my coffee cup to something a bit more heavy. I'm using my big Lego Ferrari to hold the top of my crane on. And I'm going to go away for half an hour and come back, but you're not going to have to wait that long in this video.